Welcome to Buy, Sell, Hold. I'm Mark Green from the Cars Yow podcast. And I'm Keith Martin from Sports Car Market. This is show 25. Welcome to Buy, Sell, Hold, the sports car market podcast. Market experts and car friends for over 30 years, Keith Martin and Mark Green have come together through their mutual love for collector cars. Keith and Mark will take you on a ride into the collector car market, talking with industry experts, helping you navigate your collector car journey so that you know when to make your own decisions to buy, sell, or hold. Buy, Sell, Hold is all about the essence of collecting. The collector car world is comprised of people who buy, they sell, and they hold the cars they love. Here on Buy, Sell, Hold, Keith and I talk to industry leaders, collectors, auction houses, consigners, sellers, and more who are experts in the market. So, Keith, who do we have on the line with us today? Uh, We're talking with my very good friend, David Gooding, who is the president and founder of the Gooding & Company. All right, here we go. David, welcome to Buy, Sell, Hold. Let's jump right in. If you could describe the collector car market today using just one word, what would that word be and why would you choose it? Hmm. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> I would say the word would have to be adaptive. But it, <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking of using three words like adaptive, morphing, and resilient, but I guess – that would be cheating. So I'll, I'll <laughs> but, just go. You know, with... it, it, adaptive, morphing, and resilient. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that would be cheating, but we'll let you get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you but, can place three but, bids today, David. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, during this uh, COVID crisis that we're all experiencing, uh, you know, when it when it took hold initially, you know, none of us had an idea of where how the market would uh, react and, and, and uh, how we would look at, at, at all these things. And, 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 you know, what would, what would the interest, what would the true interest and enthusiasm be for uh, collector cars? And I'm not shocked, but I am uh, pleasantly surprised and, and uh, heartened by the fact that there is just a, a, you know, the passion for cars is burning bright and, you know, no matter what, it certainly fuels a lot of people's, uh, you know, passions and, and interests. I mean, the, despite us all being locked at home, despite us all being uh, uh, forced not to go out and socialize and whatnot, we find a lot of fun and desire in, in our in our car passions. And so um, the market continues to go on. And if we can't have live auctions, we, for the time being, there are other ways to buy and sell and hold classic cars. So uh, it keeps keeps going on. And it's uh, as a car enthusiast, not just as a in the car business, but as a car enthusiast, it's um, certainly helped me get through some of this craziness. Would you yeah. think then that what this shows is that our enthusiasm and passion for cars is so great that even if something as powerful as this pandemic is not going to stop us from buying and selling cars and talking about them and enjoying them. We just won't be, we won't be silenced. No, 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 not at all. And um, definitely we have been very busy uh, in our company with sales, with private sales and uh, uh, working on our uh, online platform, which we can talk about later. But on top of that, I think that just purely as a sort of a, a way for us to it, all of us car enthusiasts to kind of get through all of this um, nuttiness is definitely during the downtimes we, we uh, or even in the uptimes. But if we want to switch off from the, the bad news or the you know various news topics that are being blared at us, we we definitely look towards our car hobbies and interest as uh, as a as a refuge. And I know that I do that, and uh, a lot of our clients and friends are doing that as well. So. Um, It's uh, certainly gotten people through this strange time. Absolutely. I worked in the automotive business back in 08, 09 during the recession period, and we were worried about sales of products back then, but it didn't happen because we found that people stuck with what they loved. They just went out to their garage, played with their cars, uh, rubbed wax on them, took care of them, bought things for them. Uh, Maybe not as much, but they didn't leave their passion, which is 
I think what we're all saying here. And and Keith, I mean, since in the last three months, how many cars have you bought? <laughs> Less than a dozen. Less than a dozen. <laughs> That's truth. Yeah, but you're getting there. I think another one's getting delivered today. So uh, yeah. We don't give up, that's for sure. Well, let me give David a proper introduction here, and then we're going to jump into our buy, sell, hold questions here. David Gooding is the president and founder of California-based Gooding & Company, the auction house acclaimed for selling the world's most significant and valuable collector cars today. The official auction house of the prestigious Pebble Beach Concord Elegance, Gooding & Company has hosted over a decade of world record-setting auctions at its three esteemed venues. David and his team also offer a wide variety of services, including private and estate sales, appraisals, and collection management. They advise the world's top collectors, serve on the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance Selection Committee, and have appraised thousands of vehicles for sale at auction by private treaty and for charitable donations. They are an active member of the YPO, the Young President's Organization, the world's premier peer network of chief executives and business leaders. We'll be back in just a moment to talk more with David about buy, sell, hold. But first, we've got a special offer from our sports car market team and one of our advertisers that make this show possible. So sit tight, keep your seatbelt on. We're going to be right back. The fourth annual Saratoga Motor Car Auction will take place on Friday, September 18th and Saturday, September 19th. It will be held at the Saratoga Performing Arts Center in the beautiful Saratoga Spa State Park located in upstate New York. Presented by the Saratoga Automobile Museum, a not-for-profit institution, this live event continues to be the premier collector car auction for the Northeastern United States. Proceeds from the auction help support the museum's educational programs and exhibits that engage, educate, and inspire the automotive community. To consign your vehicle, view current inventory, and register to bid, visit saratogamotorcarauctions.org. There you can learn how finance partner J.J. Best Bank and insurance partner Haggerty can help put you in your dream vehicle. That's saratogamotorcarauctions.org. Are you thinking of buying a car at an online auction but worried about how to make a good decision? I'm Keith Martin from Sports Car Market, And I'm here to tell you about an exciting new product we've developed to help you be a smarter collector. The SCM Guide to Buying Online is an immediate digital download. It includes five questions to always ask and why. Also, how to protect yourself while buying online from our Legal Files columnist, John Dranius. And our auction editors walk you through what you can and can't learn from a photo. Visit www.sportscarmarket.com slash buying online to purchase your copy today. It's an immediate digital download, and it's only $10. Again, that's www.sportscarmarket.com slash buying online, and get ready to be a smarter collector. Okay, we're back. So, Keith, take it away. So, David, today we're going to talk about three vehicles in your life that have been very special to you. One that you bought, one that you've sold and one that you will never let go of. Let's start with the buy. What was the vehicle? How did you find it? And what was it like to acquire it? All right. So I would say the buy is the 1958 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Roadster. And as with all of the cars in our family, it's very much family process. And that was uh, that is actually more my wife's car, but uh, it, it was a joint purchase. And basically what happened is in, in 2005, uh, after um, the company was up and off the ground and we were making just a little bit of money, we scraped together some savings. And, and I said to my wife, let's... Uh, Let's let's buy a classic car uh, because we were looking at our stock portfolio and our stock portfolio wasn't doing too well uh, and that's that was from our whatever savings we had scraped together. So both of both of us jointly said, you know, look, classic cars are doing well. We love classic cars. Let's uh, let's buy a classic car. So I said to her, okay, let's buy a Ferrari Daytona. She said, no, I want to get a 300 SL. And I said, well, I really would love to get a Ferrari Daytona. And she said, no, I want to get a 300 SL. And I said, well, I love 300 SLs. I'm not gonna. I got to argue with this, and uh, you know that's not a not a not a bad way to go. So we, I think, literally that day we're having dinner with Peter Hageman, who uh, happened to have one, and um, I think over 
by the time we got to the main course, we hadn't even gotten through appetizers. We had uh, agreed to buy this great 300 SL Roadster, which we still have to this day. It's a uh, uh, really original car, original interior, one repaint, and uh, a wonderful car that uh, we've driven on multiple rallies. Uh, my oldest daughter has driven it. I'm going to get my younger daughter to, to drive it soon when she gets a little more confident in her uh uh, ability to, to drive a manual car, but uh, it's just a fantastic car. They're, they never cease to amaze me, actually. So David, don't you think it's fascinating how in the collector car world that the minute that you and your wife decide that you're going to have a 300 SL, suddenly, suddenly, <laughs> miraculously, you have dinner with someone who happens to have one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. It's strange, isn't it? Very yeah, a little, little bit. Let me go yeah. back to that that decision because you wanted the Ferrari, your wife wanted the Mercedes. If you look back now, based on what's happened over the course, that was 2005? Is that when you bought that car? 2005, yeah. I believe okay. it was 2005 or it might have been six, but I think it was okay. five. Yeah. So 15 yeah. years later, yeah. which which car was the right financial decision? Financially, definitely the Mercedes. There you go. Uh, you married the right yeah. woman. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. But I, yeah, there's no doubt about that. But but also, you know, I try – people always ask me about the investment uh, uh, aspect of the automobiles. And I, I really try – you know, I'm, I always try to make a, a sensible buy, but I buy I, – I'm a buyer of passion. I'm a I'm an enthusiast first and foremost, not a, an investor first and foremost. And um, so I would not have predicted that. That's not why we, we bought it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it certainly has has worked out that way. And you know, there was a point where we love the 300 SL so much, we we bought another one. So we had two, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. And there was a point where we were thinking of selling one of them. And I remember at our office, we have uh, the cars in the back. There's sort of a, a combination of uh, office space with a glass wall where sometimes we we store the cars and. I was looking at that very car that we bought and it kind of occurred to me, you know, I was talking to some people and I said, you know, that car is performing better than if we had pallets of cash sitting in the bank. The car was going up more than uh, the money in the bank. So, yeah. you know, it, it hasn't always been the case, but it's been a very good, solid investment. So, you know, when there were times when, think, when we were thinking of, when we had two thinking of selling one. Putting the money in the bank would have been foolish. It was much better to keep the car. So Yeah, well, this is interesting because we've talked to so many people now. You're our 25th guest here on Buy, Sell, Hold, of which we're very grateful. And one of the things that comes out all the time from people in your world and our world is uh, unless you're in the business, you don't make a decision to buy a car based on finances. You buy it because you love it and you want it. And that's what you did. And it's interesting that you decided to take your money out of an investment platform, investment world, stock market bank, yeah. and put it into a car. But it turned out to be the better choice than the Ferrari. But that's because you chose what in this case, your wife, but now you're passionate about it. So that whole mantra stays true, right? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, I and I, I, I say that to, to everybody, buy something that you're really going to, that you really love, because I also believe when you want to get out of it, uh, if you want to or have to, uh, you'll be able to, if you're really passionate about the car mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to pass pass that passion on to somebody else you you should be able to you know there, there's something special about the car yeah. hopefully there's multiple things special about it that uh, can you can pass on to the next person that they will get as turned on by it uh, as you were and that is where value will come so there you go um, that's my that's my belief. Yeah. Keith, any more questions on that before I jump into the sold question? No, let's go ahead. Mark. Okay. All right. So now, David, let's talk about a significant vehicle that you have decided to let go. You owned it, but you sold it. Uh, what was that vehicle? Why did you decide to let it go? How did you come to that selling price decision, I should say? And was that sale easy? Well, for you, probably very easy because you're in the business. Uh, I mean, <laughs> looking back, of course, are you kind of sorry that it's gone now? Okay. <laughs> well, you know, again, I am an awful seller. I <laughs> love cars. I get attached to them. I have lots of sort of similar cars. My 
car friends joke with me, you know, here you're in the business and everything else, you you know, you should sell that. And I, I, they're like children to me. And, and <laughs> well, we can't sell that because, you know, this and da, 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 da. there's all these reasons. So, you know, strangely, there have been very few cars uh, that uh, that I've sold. So the, the one car that, that I can think of um, that I sold was a, a Mini Cooper S. And <laughs> we bought that uh, from uh, one of our own auctions. And we, 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 it was consigned. Uh, and we told the consigner, look, we're thinking of buying this. If you're okay with it, we'll leave an absentee bid. And if it's, you know, if, if it's the highest bid, it's the highest bid. If not, and, 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 you know, that's fine. And the, the owner said, yeah, yeah, you know, totally comfortable with that. The more the merrier, your, your bid is going to be uh, helping the market. So what is unusual about this is that I bought it with three of my colleagues. We all, all uh, three other specialists, we decided we wanted the Mini Cooper S and we were all going to own it together and drive it and enjoy it and be something fun for all of us to have. So we had the car for, uh, I think, a little over a year. But it's unusual. You know, we love the car. It was fun. It really, they're just a blast. They're just neat, neat, wonderful cars. But because it was, you know, we each had a fourth ownership of it, I guess I think none of us really felt comfortable as if the car was our own. And while we're, we're very relaxed about in trusting about whoever, you know, anybody could use it and drive it and do whatever, and, you know, it wasn't a problem. I don't think we ever really fully attached to the car. So it was certainly for me much easier to sell it. I get uh, much more attached uh, to my other cars. So that was the sell. Uh, and I think we, we sold it uh, for roughly what we had in it. And so, Well, that's not bad. What year was that Cooper S? Uh, 66, I believe. 66, yeah. Very cool. Everybody I've known that's had one of those really loved it dearly. I'll never forget the day I got to drive one for the first time. I was in college. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was just so it was so much fun. So, but yeah. I, but I understand that multiple ownership thing that can be a bit of a challenge. I've done that once, and it didn't work out very well at all. And I just said yeah. I'm never going to do that again because there's always that uneasiness about, well, am I using it too much or they or I don't like what they're doing or what they're not doing. So, yeah. Have you done that since with cars? Have you bought cars with other colleagues since? No, no. <laughs> there you no, go. No. <laughs> no, and, you know, would I do it again? Perhaps. But, uh, yeah, no, it hasn't uh, hasn't come up. There you go. All right, Keith, take it away. Well, so, David, let's talk about a vehicle that you will never, ever let go of. How did you find it, and what does it mean to you? Huh, huh, okay, well, that's a tough one. I, I narrowed it down to two, but I'll I'll start. I'll I'll, I'll say we can we can go with one car, and uh, if you want to hear the story on the second one, we can go with that too. But okay. uh, anyway, so the, the, well, so, the okay. so David, if the story on the first one is interesting enough, we'll let you <laughs> also tell the second story. <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. Well, all right, go uh, ahead. So my car interest, as I find with a lot of uh, car people, came from my father. He was a great car enthusiast. And so in 1962, he bought a 1955 Jaguar XK140 coupe, and he was the second owner. He found it at a uh, Concours. Uh, he and my mom were dating at the time and they went to this car show big surprise you know out on a date take take a lady to a car show and in the parking lot was this uh wonderful black uh, xk 140 coupe and um it had a for sale sign on it so my dad typically uh, had no money because he had bought another car about a month before so he borrowed the money from his mother and uh, bought this XK140. My parents went on their honeymoon in it. Then my dad got a job working as a curator for Harris Auto Collection. He drove it as a daily car when he was at Harris in Reno. He put over the course of a lifetime, his life, his his ownership lifetime with the car, about a hundred thousand miles on the car. And by the time I was in high school, it was pretty tired and, and worn out, but I'd managed to convince him that uh, I needed a car to drive in high school. So we, we sort of uh, got it revived and uh, working once again. And so I drove that car in high school. And 
eventually, after many years of sitting languishing in pretty rough shape, we restored the car. And uh, I've got it uh, now restored back in its uh, as delivered uh, livery. Well, it was always the same color, black with a red interior, but uh, we had to repaint uh, most of the car and um, put a new interior in it. But it's a it's a wonderful car. And it's got so many family memories and, um, you know, me driving it in high school and I drove it to my first job, which was working at Nethercut's auto collection out in Somar. And I very clearly remember leaving, I'd leave every day in, in uh, the San Fernando Valley at about four o'clock in a 140 Jag Coupe that has been sitting out in a parking lot uh, in San Fernando Valley is about 120 degrees when you get inside. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. And the air conditioning worked really well, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Air conditioning worked really well, and uh, so it's not the it's not the coolest car in that way, but it's very cool in other ways. Yeah, great memories. That's a great story. Can we hear the second one now? <laughs> I was okay. wondering if Keith was going to let you come in with that yeah. second story, but yeah, I'll second that. Okay, so the second car is another car that uh, is connected with my dad, and that's a 1913 Mercer Raceabout, which uh, we still have as well, and that was the car I learned to drive on. Uh, I was 13 years old. Yeah. And uh, people think they're actually very difficult cars to drive. But I know, Keith, you've driven you've driven one and they're wonderful cars to drive. Actually, very easy, very predictable, very. They were the one of the first great sports cars and they're just incredibly rewarding and fun to drive. And that ranks as my favorite car. So. Wow. Have, have your either of your daughters tried to drive that car? Not yet. We are that that car has been uh, benefiting, we shall say, from a uh, mechanical restoration, and we joke about it that it's going to be home next week. Every week, it seems like <laughs> it's going to be home next week. That it was hoping for Father's Day, but no, not yet. But uh, they've both been out in it, but uh, not driven it yet. But I, I that's one of my uh, goals this summer. So. Wow. Uh, I hope to get uh, all of the ladies behind the wheel of the Mercer. That would be cool. Now, Keith, yeah. Keith always likes to ask a question that kind of, this is might be a tough one for you. Is there a price that you would part with those cars for? Could anybody offer you anything that you'd actually let those go? Uh, the Mercer, it'd be, it'd be very hard. Uh, yeah. That would be really hard. It just it literally is my favorite car in the world. I. I uh, I love that car. I guess, you know, other cars certainly would uh, have a price. That one would be, I would have to really do a lot of soul searching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, to yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, no, that's good. I like that answer. But the fact, I mean, who could say that they learned how to drive on a 1913 Mercer race about? I don't know anybody. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> well, it, uh, it was a great, it, Actually, a great a great way to uh, learn how to drive a, a manual car. Yeah, and, uh, ah, great. wonder. Great stories. Yeah. Well, we're going to take another short break. Thank our sponsors here. And when we come back, we've got the perfect all around collector car for David Gooding that's going to be exposed. So stay in your seat. We'll be right back and uh, see what he has to say. Sit tight. I'm Keith Martin, and we're going to talk about Cindy Meidel and her company, Car PR USA. For three decades, Cindy Meidel has been a driving force within the collector car space. Her company has been an integral part of the launch, growth, and success of many prominent classic car auctions and Concord Elegance across the country, as well as during the famed Monterey Car Week. Her agency boasts a list of recognizable clients, offering a balance of public relations, advertising, marketing, and social media, which combined with extensive relationships, gives clients maximum exposure and brand identity. If you're ready to launch a new business or event, or need to kick an existing one into overdrive, call Car PR USA today at 480-277-1864. That's 480-277-1864, or email cindy at carprusa.com. 
I've been subscribing to Sports Car Market Magazine for decades, and it shows up like clockwork in my mailbox every month. But what about when I'm on the road? Did you know that digital subscriptions to Sports Car Market are just $2.50 a month when you sign up with the promo code DIGITAL50? That's less than a cup of coffee. You get 50% off regular price just for listening here to Buy, Sell, Hold. Plus, digital subscribers receive instant access to a year's worth of back issues and the exclusive Insider's Guide, including the 2020 Insider's Guide to the beautiful Amelia Island Concourse and all the spring auctions as well. No more boredom while sitting at the airport or on your flight. To get your Sports Car Market digital subscription at this discount, go to sportscarmarket.com slash digital50. Your order will automatically get you the 50% off. What a deal. Go and sign up today at sportscarmarket.com slash digital50. So, David, we're back. This is the perfect question for you because you've been around so many cars and driven so many cars. Your entire life has been about exciting cars. So what would you consider to be the perfect all-around collector car? Not the most exotic, not the most expensive, not the most rare, but the one that when you went to the garage, you thought, I'm going to hop in this car, and whether it's a Tour or a Concours or a Cars and Coffee – just being in this car is going to make me happy. You know, I would have to go with either a 67 to 73 Porsche 911 S or a Alpha Spider, like a 57 Alpha Spider. Either one of those. Uh, they kind of, they do, they do so many things so well, uh, are such charming and rewarding cars to drive. You know, extremely reliable. They they embody everything great about wonderful sports cars. So if we, you know, and then I then I of course have to kind of limit myself and 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 think just to, are we just talking about sports cars? But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, that's where I would go. One of those. <laughs> so you've uh, got yeah. Keith and I in an arm wrestle here because you're talking to me, the Porsche guy, and Keith, the Alpha yeah. guy. So you've appealed yeah. to both of our our passions. So Keith, <laughs> uh, let me let me have you ask David um, some questions about how do you balance those two? Because I, I see why you're thinking both of those, but those are in my world kind of different in some ways. So let's 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 ask a question from an Alpha guy to steer well, him towards I, I, the Alpha. <laughs> Well, I'd like you, David, both both those cars are uh, the epitome of small displacement cars of their era. Yeah. And when you're driving the Alpha, uh, mm-hmm. tell us about it. What What's unique to driving, say, a Giulietta Spider Veloce? Well, so many things, but they are just fun to drive. To me, the sound and noise of a car, the, 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 the sound that they make is so important to me. Um, I, I have to uh, – it, it has to be uh, a beautiful sounding car. And then I can just absolutely overlook so many other things. Not that I'm overlooking anything with those cars, but uh, the Alpha, they sound great. And they're extremely rewarding to drive. They handle beautifully. They look great. So the steering's fantastic. The gearbox is great. The engine's revvy and great. And it, it just the, – the, the car encourages you to – drive it and drive it harder and, and it's just rewarding and um, very forgiving, very comfortable. That's another thing that I find. It, it, does a car fit me? Is it comfortable? And when I sit in it, when I look out at it, are the sight lines good and comfortable and easy? And um, So uh, both those cars, both an Alpha and a Porsche, definitely fit that description. So, I, you know, in driving a, a Spider Veloce, you know, they're, they're just so fun to use and drive and you can drive them, you know, at seven tenths and have a lot of fun. You can drive them at 10 tenths and have a ton of fun and they're just reliable, great. And you get out of them, you stand back, turn around, look, look at them. They're just great, great cars. David, when you look at both of those cars, and let's, let's talk about different uses for those vehicles. Say you're going on a multi-day tour. Mm-hmm. something that you're going to spend many days in, does one have an advantage over another? Hmm. 
It really it depends on the tour. I mean, you, you know, the Alpha is certainly fun. Well, both are fun on a very tight and windy road. But, you know, Spiders, you know, if you're driving a convertible top car, an open top car that, you know, long, long, a full day of driving, you may want a, a car with a hard top. Uh, so I might opt for the 911. Uh, if it's a shorter sprint, uh, you know, I, I think uh, open cars are wonderful. Um, you know, I, I, I chose sort of both because a 911 becomes a better sort of more practical everyday kind of car. You can use that as almost an everyday driver or as an everyday driver. Not that you couldn't the Alpha, but it's uh, the Porsche becomes a little bit more adaptive that way, you know, a little bit more forgiving that way. Sure. Um, I think also, David, you know, the Porsche is really the next gen. You think about the disc brakes, uh, the, the six cylinder engine. It's if, if an Alpha is the kind of the ultimate car of the late 50s, early 60s, and the 911 S would be the mid 60s to early 70s. Totally. Yeah, definitely. Makes sense. Definitely. Yeah. They're both winners. That's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Keith, uh, dive into some, uh, get David talking about his business here. Yeah, David. So, uh, you know, it's all of the auction companies were moving towards having an online presence because people are more and more comfortable uh, with bidding on cars that way. The virus has just forced everybody to move there much quicker than they thought they would. How is your company reacting to that? Well, we've been working on the uh, online platform for a while. We don't like to rush into anything, but uh, we've launched our Geared Online program, and we're very excited about it. We're, we're getting consignments uh, we already, and we're, we're actually filling up our first sale, which will take place in August. But we first wanted to perfect the online bidding, which, we're, which we did in our live auctions, and we've been doing that for about a year and a half, and we wanted to work out all the bugs as far as bidder registration and actually make sure that uh, that worked all well before we went into the full online program. And definitely because of uh, COVID, it has sped things up because we haven't been distracted by having to fill up sales, live auction sales. So now we can focus on this. And, you know, it uh, could be a, a blessing in disguise. We will see. So, David, part of the magic of a land auction is coming around a car with your friends walking around the car, touching the car, looking under the hood. How mm -hmm. do you try to recreate that assurance for people who are bidding online that, so that they really know what they're bidding on? Right. Well, that has always been something that is extremely important to us. We want all of our uh, buyers, anybody that is interested in anybody that is bidding to be comfortable with what they're bidding on, whether it be in our live auctions or certainly in our online auctions. So, for us, we, you know, we, we have a tremendous amount of uh, expertise with that Gooding and Company, and we want to capitalize upon that. So we set out initially very much with the understanding that we had to put our arms around every car that we were going to be offering online. So we have a warehouse where every car that we are offering online will be. They, they will be open. It will be open for viewing by appointment. So if clients want to come in, they are welcome to. We can show them around. We'll be able to get the cars up on a lift. Uh, but also, if they're not able to come in, uh, we will do that for them. We can FaceTime with clients. We can literally send a million photos. Uh, we'll walk around the car with them. Our specialists will be there to, uh, as I say, stand on the front fender and represent the cars for the seller because it's also, from the seller's point of view, uh, can be quite a, quite a uh, time-consuming process. So, uh, we will take the car on and represent it and accurately present it and be the eyes and ears for uh, for the buyers. So, David, also in this situation, uh, something that some other online companies don't do, will you actually hold the title to the car and make sure that the car is properly paid for and that the transaction goes the way it's supposed to? Yes, most definitely. Yes. And th th thank you for bringing that up. So, we are a registered dealer and we're dealers in, in the states that uh, – uh, we hold sales. So we're a California dealer. The, the sale uh, takes place in California. And yes, we, we handle the paperwork. So the seller gives us the title. We check, make sure that the title work is all in good uh, transferable order. And the buyer can then be confident that when they buy the car, they're getting good paperwork with it. They've got a good transferable title that is 
you know, legally binding and, and they can, you know, everything is uh, straightforward. How many cars will you have? Our first sale, we should have between 40 to 50 cars. And how long will the sale be in process? The sale will be a, a week long from August 3rd. Well, just five days, actually. Sorry. The, the sale will be from August 3rd to August 7th. And will there be some kind of anti-sniping provision? How will the, sa- the, the hammer finally come down on your sale? Yes, we do have an anti-snipe um, program. So definitely, uh, if, if a client is close to, to closing on it, there's an anti-snipe process. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And then what I mean, let me clarify that. What I mean by that is that if somebody makes a bid, you're not going to steal a car by sliding in with a bid one second before it closes. That if somebody makes a bid, there will be a, a few minutes for, for other people to place bids as well. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. What does the next six months look like for Gooding & Company aside from this this uh, auction coming up in August? So we're we're working vigorously on the uh, Geared Online be, beyond the uh, – August auction, we're actually doing other sales. So we'll be doing other online sales following that. And we've, we're working on some really exciting sales that we'll be doing probably uh, later fall and then just in December. We'll be announcing those very soon. Our live auction over in uh, England, Passion of a Lifetime, which is one collection of 16 cars, an incredible group of cars that we were going to have an April 1st in London. That, of course, got postponed. We are not sure exactly when we will be um, announcing that sale, but it will be pretty soon. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. But that sale could very well be our next live auction. And then, of course, uh, we've got Scottsdale in January, which is going ahead as planned. There you go. Very cool. No, I'm just excited, David, to to actually to talk to you. I haven't really chatted you with this whole thing uh, started. I know, and I and I just I'm so pleased to see the entire car industry uh, shifting and adapting because we said at the very beginning people love cars. I've bought and sold three or four cars in the past three or four months as I'm kind of fine tuning my own collection. My passion for cars hasn't changed one bit. It's in fact, I have kind of a little bit more time now to do what I call car knitting, where I said, what if I bought that? Well, what if I sold those two and bought that? You know, it's a uh, it's something that we car guys do. We can't help ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And how may, may I ask, how have you how have you bought the cars? Has, has it been what, yeah. what has been the process? Uh, I just bought a, a, an AMG uh, SL55 from a, a, a classified ad in the Mercedes-Benz Star magazine. Okay. Uh, from Mark Gertner. I don't know if you know him. He races Bugattis. Okay. Mike Gertner. Mike Gertner, Mike. right. Uh, I bought a, uh, a original paint Volvo 122S by putting a note on the Volvo 122 forum saying, anybody know of an automatic for sale? And within 30 seconds, the, I had an email. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I bought a 23,000 mile Series 3 Jaguar on uh, Bring a Trailer. Okay, great. So, so you know, all kind of all over the map. It's it's it, it, like you when you when you put the word out that you're the way I phrase it is I'm not really looking, but if you happen to hear about, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boom. Yeah, as you say, I know. Later, I'm, I'm, I'm posted. It's just like you know when your wife says, "Well, I'm kind of interested in a 300 SL." For you, David, that's permission to buy. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, we we had a deal. We had a deal within 24 hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a couple of bottles of wine and a nice meal with Peter, yeah. and it's it's a done deal. Let me add one thing in there. Peter Hageman is one of the most respected names in the classic car world, and part of what we haven't talked about today, but it's so important that you buy quality, and I think who you buy from is almost as important as the car. Yeah, absolutely. And Peter's been in the business forever, so. Well, David, you've taken us on a marvelous ride today as we knew you would uh, across the auction block many times. You're a treasure trove of knowledge. I want to thank you for being our guest here on Buy, Sell, Hold. If you were to give our listeners one little parting piece of advice when it comes to buying, selling, or holding a collector car, what would that advice be? Hmm. Well, I think I said it earlier. I mean, buy what you love and what you will use and by use it doesn't necessarily mean dry but what you will derive your pleasure from some people get a lot of pleasure out of just uh staring at a car in their garage it doesn't have to be driven but you know i i always try to 
tease out of people what is their what do they want out of the car do they see do they is their dream to drive with their their wife on a weekend trip you know to a certain place if that is the case do, do they fit in that car are they comfortable are they both do they both enjoy it da, da, da. or is it something else do they want to do the millimilia or the colorado grand or take it to a concord or is it something that they want to restore uh with their child so it really try to make it fit that dream and um the rest will work out that's my advice. There you go. Well, listeners, uh, best way to learn more about David and his company is go to goodingco.com. You will find a treasure trove of fun things to look at. When they have their online auctions, they're live streamed. You can watch them. You can be a part of them. When you do that, David, I get no work done that day. I think I can have it up <laughs> in my window. and I get nothing done because people start texting me. But that's a great way to do it. Of course, you want to follow them on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, Keith and I will make sure that all of these links are on David's show notes page, which we we will build for you. It's available at sportscarmarket.com slash podcast, or you can find it on my website at carsyow.com and just search under David Gooding. It'll show up there. David, thanks for calling in today. So good to catch up with you. Uh, and thanks for being so generous with your time and your expertise, your market expertise in particular, and being a guest today on Buy, Sell, Hold. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And David, all I want you to do is to promise me you'll send me a picture or a video of each one of your daughters when they get behind the wheel of the Mercer. I will do that. I definitely <laughs> will you. do that. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's great to bring that tradition on. This has been great. Thanks so much. We hope to have shed some light today on the collector car market. You can listen to all the Buy, Sell, Hold podcasts at sportscarmarket.com and carsyeah.com. You'll find hundreds of inspiring automotive enthusiasts on the Cars Yeah website as well. Be sure to log into sportscarmarket.com and subscribe to Keith's SCM weekly newsletter. You'll find digital issues, insider event guides, and price guides, along with our platinum database, column profiles, classifieds, and many other resources. Join Keith and Mark next week to hear from another automotive industry leader who will help you determine when to buy, sell, or hold.